Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, welcome everyone to this uh, amazing conversation looking at imagination in every classroom. Um, you're joining us on the uh, final day of the Learning Planet Festival, although some events are continuing on and never finishing, um, but it's been an amazing ride of uh, six, seven, eight days, I think, of over 500 events coming across the world, celebrating learning to take care of oneself, others, and the planet. I'm Ed Stevenette from the Learning Planet team. I'm really privileged to be able to uh, co-host this session um, with uh, an amazing uh, A member, team member, Susie, who will introduce herself in the sec. Um, but just to give you an idea of this uh, conversation today, we're bringing together um, four amazing speakers coming from across the world who are have a vision, have ideas, have experience of where does imagination come into the classroom? Where does it manifest itself? How can it grow? We'll be having this very open uh, conversation uh, today. Um, and don't hesitate to ask any questions in the chat on YouTube. Uh, even after the session, we'll try to get back to you as well. Let's open up this dialogue so that we can be uh, bringing together people looking to foster imagination uh, in every classroom. Before we uh, introduce the, the speakers for today, Susie, my wonderful co host, do you want to just introduce yourself, maybe share? a little bit about where imagination comes in for you at the, the incredible Imagination Factory. Of course, hello everyone. My name is Susie. I'm a proud member and Wiradjuri woman. I grew up in the central west of New South Wales. Um, yeah, a little bit about me. I've just recently um, finished studying at uni, which is very exciting. I've just transitioned to full-time work at AIM. Um, and I think, as someone who's recently um, finished studying and a really creative person myself, imagination is such an interesting topic and I can't wait for today's discussion. Um, yeah, who am I and what do I love? I, um, I spend a lot of time with um, family and friends and um, I think personally I'm quite creative and um, yeah, so at the Imagination Factory, it is a really cool and wonderful place. Um, we have just created just yeah it's hard to put in words to describe this workplace and space that we have for kids and teachers to come to for our factory days um so we have called it the imagination factory and it just opens the doors for kids and teachers um to really incorporate imagination and encourage them to use their imagination we do lots of fun activities that really get the kids in particular thinking outside the box and encourage them to think of the most crazy um, purple unicorns in all the rocket ships and really encourage the kids to be themselves in the space, um, which is just so fun as well. I think we get a lot out of that. Um, and yeah, as a proud Aboriginal person as well, I think imagination is and has been incorporated throughout our culture for a long time, last 60,000 plus years. I think there's um, a lot of imagination has been incorporated in that culture and um, just, you know, the achievements of Aboriginal people everywhere, it's super important. And I think that imagination in the classroom is a really important um, topic of discussion. And I think it's, I'm really passionate about it because I think for our kids that do fall outside of the margins, that imagination is an opportunity and imagination um, is a chance for kids who do fall outside of those academic margins um, to find something that they're good at and something that they're, um, they can be proud of and belong to and use that to um, really be themselves. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit of my introduction. Um, yeah, and then I guess before we hear from our panellists today, 
um, and get into today's topic, um, here are a few thoughts from our first imagination circle last year about the power of imagination. Humanity is facing a number of different pressure points where we actually need imaginative thinking. We have seven billion imaginations um, and, and, and this is what will, um, what will give us hope for a better world for sure. The starting point to imagine an alternative future is to realize that the only thing that travels faster than light is imagination. Let's start by imagining together what makes us human. How do we create the conditions to express our humanity? Imagination is a is a key kind of part of the route to empathy and also to you know find ways to engage with the sublime. It's about understanding imagination as the key to so many different doors. Over the past centuries, in my early years, I notably experienced life as an artist, a prisoner, a Buddhist monk, a junkie, a genius, a poetess, an assassin, a mother, and even a rabbit. This was pretty stimulating. I would love for all kids to experience as many lives as possible. I am 17 years old. Sometimes I myself wish that I had the imagination of a small child. A child does not think too much about the hardships of life, but rather builds a world that he or she wants to see. You know, how do we imagine the best way to foster imagination? It's really a fundamental um, you know, concept for us as humans to have imagination. Imagination plays a really important role in how we look at the world and how we build our own future as well. What is that possible future where we can, all of our societies can live peacefully? And what do we need to learn to actually become that kind of species that doesn't require violence to, to evolve? Can that be one of the uh, key contributions of our uh, imagination uh, capacity? That imaginative capacity to wander yourself into a path and then the energy to move is something that's critical. The unexpected can come out and what do we do to enable that to happen? Imagination in its simplest forms is playing with possibility. Let us imagine education as a big puzzle and each of us have different pieces of that puzzle. So if we connect all people together and they can share their puzzles, puzzle pieces, and then we can solve the whole puzzle. Allow them to really imagine what they can do for a better world and for a better future. That really allows them to take action and that action gives them hope for the future. We're all about ensuring that every single person really is able to chart their own path of success. If you redefine and reimagine the idea of success to be thriving, then every child has the ability and the potential to succeed in their own way because they define their own success. What comes with imagination is ultimately creativity and with that fear, there's something so truly transformative about being able to express ourselves deeply. It's in those moments of stillness when we reconnect with our most innermost feelings is where imagination gets activated. There we go. So uh, as you'll see, there's already been some amazing uh, voices, a couple of which are, are we're here with us today, sharing about where imagination comes into their work. We'll get started off meeting uh, our amazing um, group of speakers here today, just by uh, asking the question how, of how imagination comes into their work on a day to day. So maybe Nikita, you can uh, get us started off. Um, where does imagination, what is imagination for you and where does it feed into your day-to-day -day work? Thank you so much, Ed, for bringing me in here. Hi, everybody. This is Nikita Desai from Design for Change Global. And yes, I, I think I love the topic when uh, you had mentioned about that uh, it's about imagination in the classroom and me being an educator for the last 20, 22 years now. Uh, along with Riverside School in Ahmedabad. I think it was 
interesting to dwell into this one. So yeah, uh, what does imagination mean to me? Then I think if we look at the definition of imagination, it says that it's an ability to create new ideas or mental pictures, which are futuristic. For me, <laughs> imagination is a core life skill. It's an inherent skill for human beings. Just imagine where would we as human beings be if we didn't imagine the world that we are in today. So I strongly believe that each one of us is born with this power of imagination. Remember the time when uh, you were young and when you thought nothing was impossible. When you colored the sky green and the trees purple and it was okay. <laughs> Uh, when uh, tooth fairies and superheroes were real and you thought that if you jumped just high enough, you would catch a star. <laughs> and then you grew older and forgot about the power of imagination. So what happened to that young child who, uh, who had no boundaries for imagination? No matter what we tell our children Ed, today, the moment they imagine, we stop them by saying, ah, but that is not possible. <laughs> which is our logical argument to them. That's what I feel. But then can we try? Can we try shifting from but to and and encourage them to be fearless? I think once they see the strength of their own imagination, they themselves will become realistic. And uh, by asking questions, what if the what if questions that we majorly deal into. So imagine giving someone the power to imagine a better tomorrow. And imagine the difference of saying, I can, instead of, can I? Because I feel somewhere the education system has been doing that to the children that we are dealing with in this today's life. So I'm sure at some point in our young lives, we all would have seen the birds flying around us and thought that I wish I could also fly just like them. Because I did that as a kid. I remember that, oh, I wish, or if I'm missing my friend and I might say, oh, I wish I could fly to her. But then, yes, Wright brothers and many others imagined the same and invented the machine that we now know as flights or airplanes, right? So I think somewhere that's what it led to when somebody sat and imagined that I wish I could fly. So for me today, if we as educators believe in our children and their power of imagination to make this world a better place, believe me, they will, they will show that they can. And they have it all that it takes to bring the change and they don't need to take permissions from any of us adults around them. So well, at Design for Change, where I come from, uh, we strongly believe in the power of imagination and the potential of every child to say, I can. We believe that if you ask a child to imagine a solution for the problems that they face, they can come up with creative solutions. So how we do it? by just using these four simple steps of design thinking, which is feel, imagine, do, and share. So feel is the step where you ask the child to think from their heart. So not with their brains, but just with their hearts. And then imagine a solution, a creative solution, which would help the user to move from the current scenario to the preferred scenario. And then just go out and do it. Roll up your sleeves and get into action and then shamelessly share it with the world around them. So I think uh, the first step that is the feel, this is the step which allows them to develop empathy for the user by interacting with them, by understanding what is the core problem and why is it bothering the user. Once they work with the user rather than for the user, they develop empathy and are ready to imagine a creative solution. I think I just heard in the video that uh, you Wait a second for Nikita to join us back. It was on such a roll, but we will get to the uh, final part of sharing uh, Feel, Imagine, Do Share in a second. Susie, I maybe pass to you to introduce our next speaker. Yeah, it's a, it's a shame we lost her. She was on such a roll and I was just so relatable listening to her talk about kids and their imagination and I really do believe kids hold the keys to imagination and we need to tap into their minds more 
and encourage people to imagine more because she was so right. Um, you know, I just loved everything she had to say. But we might throw next to Ron, um, if you'd like to just give a little intro about yourself and um, what your, how you incorporate imagination in your own field of work. Yeah, thank you, Susan. Um, my name is Ron, and what I currently do is I support youth, support high school students in setting up and running something called Curiosity Club within their own school. And I found it interesting. I haven't thought about how imagination ties into curiosity too much before before I joined um, the first imagination circle. Like, but once I was there, I realized that there's such a strong link because you you can't be curious about something if you can't imagine where it can go you can't think about the things you want to learn if you can't imagine what there is there to learn about um so i think th the key thing that we do with imagination and curiosity club is to really stimulate to think okay what is there what do you want well, what what things can you think of that you'd be curious about learning and really imagine the possibilities i think the key thing that i want to also highlight is that i strongly believe that you can't have imagination without anything like you, there, there needs to be some root you can't imagine green skies if you don't know what the sky is you can't imagine a new engineering solution if you don't know th the problem or you don't know the, the the basis of engineering so i really think that when, when you take the context of, of bringing to a classroom i think a big part of it is to also like spark imagination in a way and how to do that is something i'm very happy to, to discuss later and not entirely sure myself but kind of spark how can you start something? How can you give them like a little a little piece so that they can imagine the rest? And what piece should that be? How big should that be? How much should you give them? Is less more? I, I don't know. It's something to we, we I think be very happy to uh, to discuss with with all of you. Um, yeah. So I think es essentially to answer your question, Susie, uh, for me, imagination is is a really core component that I've recently come to realize. <laughs> um, and it really brings out curiosity. I really think they come hand in hand. Like to be curious about something, you need to be imagined, to be able to imagine where it can go and what you can learn from it. Well, thanks so much. And um, I've noted, and I think that might be a question that will plant the seed. How do you spark imagination in the classroom? And, and I really like the intentionality of what you say there. It's really how how do we light that very very first spark and then see where it goes and i think that will be a, a a big question for the speakers um in the in the next part of the session just before we transition on um quickly why did you choose curiosity as the name of curiosity club the main reason curiosity well for me the definition of curiosity is the intrinsic motivation to learn and the way the club started personally was my motivation for learning. I felt that decreasing and I wanted to find a way to bring that back in myself and in other people so that the motivation won't go down, to keep that motivation up. Um, so the, yeah, the, the answer to that is because the core of what we do is curiosity, is this motivation, this intrinsic motivation, and, and then imagination ties hand in hand with that. Absolutely. Um, thanks so much. And uh, I think it's a great segue to pass on to yourself, Nia, because I think you've been creating curiosity, imagination in classrooms and spaces wherever you've been going. Um, maybe introduce yourself and uh, yeah, where does it come into your your day to day? Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Nia and I'm calling in from um, beautiful Ghana country, um, but I was born and raised in Wales in the UK. Um, I, I guess like there's there's almost like two ways of looking at it. There's how imagination comes into my work that I'm employed to do and love to do and see as a call in as an educator. But then it's like how imagination comes into my life's work of being human. And I and I think fundamentally, like like actually finding our imagination and feeding it and freeing it is is how we really understand the beauty and complexity of being human. Like I think that um imagination like it was said in the intro video is like it, it's a force that kind of is is the key to so many other experiences of being human it's you know the start of empathy it's the start of imagining our future and hope you know it's um 
it's it's the key to ideas and making connections between things. And I think, you know, fundamentally, so many of those things uh, are, are what it really means to be human. Um, so I'm really interested in the relationship between imagination and other like invisible forces and how they both kind of like, like almost in an infinity loop feed each other. Um, like in work, um, it's like, I guess my work is very much on what you said, like, how do we spark imagination? Because I believe it to be innate in everybody. But I feel like the education system, as most of us know it, has either starved or, or suppressed our imagination. So like sometimes there's that kind of like need to reignite imagination and how we do that. And then, you know, like once people have found it again and like a conscious of the force within them, you know, like how, how do they feed it? And, you know, that's different for everybody. Um, but then, you know, like, how do we free it? And, and I think my biggest learning has been through play work. And that is that like play can't be controlled or coerced. It has to be by invitation. Um, and th there's so few opportunities for that in the current education system. Like, you know, everything is controlled and planned to the finest detail, like lesson plans, like there's, an outcome decided, you know, this will be the outcome of the lesson and minute by minute, the lesson is planned. Um, you know, there's very little opportunity within the current education system for emergence and for possibilities to emerge. And I, I think, yeah, fundamentally my work as an educator is how do we have less coercion and control in education and more invitations to play with possibility? Um, and, and, and not try to control the outcomes, you know, and, and like if we're maybe agreeing on a value base, so we're using our imagination um, to make more just and joyful worlds, not just more of the same. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I think that's it. Thanks, Nia. I've actually had the privilege of coming to visit Nia and seeing what she does and meet some of the young people she works with. And yeah, I just couldn't agree more with what you said. Thanks for sharing. Um, I'm just going to throw it over to Francois. Would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a bit about how imagination is incorporated in your work? I, I'll be happy, but Nikita is back, so maybe we should uh, give her a chance to to complete what she was saying. I'm so sorry, guys. My network went off, and yeah, I was imagining that I wish there was no need of having network <laughs> problems anywhere. And I wish it is always the seamless one. And I think that's where the in-person meetings happen. But then, yeah, here I am again. So I don't know where you lost me, but then, um, yeah, I think I was sharing about the feel, imagine, do share and uh, looking at that, how we have been uh, encouraging children to design for the people rather than, uh, to design with the people rather than for them. So I think, that's where it comes in because I think somewhere we had, uh, uh, I had heard this, that when you let the children design for somebody, they have the face of that person, the user in mind, and then it actually helps them to imagine a creative solution, which can then help the user to come up with whatever the scenario that they are looking at, which is the best case scenario. The way we talk to our children that, can you close your eyes and just, imagine a best case scenario that I wish or what if <laughs> the way I just did for the network. <laughs> so I think, yeah, uh, uh, that was it from my end. Uh, I'll be happy to take any other questions later on. Thank you, Nikita. I was so glad you could join back. Um, but yeah, thank you for sharing. And we'll now throw over to Francois to do introduce yourself and how imagination is incorporated in your work. Um, Thank you so much. Uh, it's it's uh, very inspiring to be uh, together and, and hear everything we've heard. Um, because Ron was talking about curiosity, I'll start with uh, an anecdote. I think that, you know, I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't have uh, launched the Learning Planet Institute and Festival if it was not for my six-year-old coming back uh, after her, his teacher, her teacher, his teacher told me, he's such a kind kid, but he's asking questions. Um, and uh, and so, you know, for me, that was the sign that, you know, I should question the education system. Um, and uh, and indeed, I think that questioning is is at the heart of um, of many of our human abilities, especially imagination. Uh, if you question uh, what exists, then you can imagine something else. Uh, and if you question the unfairness 
uh, of our world, then you can imagine a better world. Uh, I think that's that's uh, for me a, a very strong driver. Uh, I, I just uh, shared a story that was written um, by one of our students, uh, an intern that is uh, doing an amazing work in in not only imagining uh, possible futures, but in inviting others uh, to do so. Uh, and I think that, you know, we need uh, a thousand and one dreams uh, and we need to um, try to have dreams and imagine imagine a world where every kid could imagine uh, their own future. Okay, uh, that's that's the sort of the meta uh, dream, uh, if you want. And if, uh, so imagine a dream where... Uh, everyone could um, make their dream come true uh, by starting sharing uh, their dream with others uh, and starting to uh, connect with others, sharing similar dreams. Um, and, you know, I, I loved um, uh, this song that starts it by, by saying, you know, I may be a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I'm sure you all know uh, that one. And, and, um, and if you're not the only dreamer, then how can you connect to other dreamers? Uh, can we, you know, can we imagine what the world would be if we had a GPS for dreams that will uh, enable us to connect to others uh, having uh, similar dreams? Uh, because I don't know about you, uh, but none of my dreams came true uh, alone. You know, all of the little things I've done in my life were because I was connecting to others that uh, shared similar dreams and so we could work together on making them come true. And I think that, you know, this is um, something that should be uh, given to everyone. Uh, and I think that, you know, we all have the power to make a difference, uh, especially if we connect with others wanting to do the same. Uh, alone, sometimes we are powerless. Uh, so I fully agree with, with Nikita um, from the can I to I can, but especially the we can. Uh, and I think that that power of we uh, can can make a big difference. So imagine a world where you know we could um, do what uh, matters uh, and 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 change the course of of the current world, which as we know is not uh, on the right track. Uh, and and so imagine if all of those that wanted to make a difference were joining forces. Uh, imagine uh, that we would take seriously um, uh, Martin Luther King uh, when he was saying. Let's planetize the movement for justice and for a better world. Uh, so, you know, that's what we are trying to do in the Learning Planet. We're trying to promote this idea of planetism that has been beautifully uh, told uh, in the little princess uh, story that uh, I try to share with you. And I think that uh, we can, um, you know, or, or I mean, citizenship was in theory invented to do something together at the city level, uh, except that historically it was only the men in arms that were citizens. Okay, there was no women uh, having citizenship. There was there's still no children having citizenship. Migrants have no citizenship. Uh, so planetizenship is a much more integrative, uh, inclusive, and ecological uh, perspective. Because um, imagine if the city walls were not separating humans. Uh, from nature imagine if you know we were all living on a planet and we would not only try to save the planet but we just love the planet and if you love the planet then uh of course you care for it uh of course you care for yourself and for others and for the planet uh, simultaneously so that's the the the, the dream I, I wanted to share with you and i hope we can make it come true and and invite everyone and i i love so much design for change and because nikita was somewhat uh, uh cut uh, you know, we, we try to, um, I think we can feel, imagine, do, share is very close to the hero's journey of Joseph Campbell. And every one of us can be a hero uh, for the world of tomorrow of in the imagination uh, that we are describing. You know, it's basically feel, imagine, do, share is very much like, you know, what are your emotions? Uh, what are your ability to explore? Uh, what are your ability to transform and your ability to contribute? So emotions, exploration, transformation, and contribution is really at the heart of, of imagination. Uh, and so imagine if we could all uh, go through that circle. Imagine if we were all heroes of the world of tomorrow and able to co-design it and, and co-construct it uh, with each other so that we make our dreams come true. Thank you. Thanks so much, Francois. And, and I think what's really coming out is a sense of um, of the collective, of the co-created that's coming out, the the the, the collaborative, uh, how we come together. 
Um, we are going to, going to go to a brief uh, video of, uh, of the professors of AIM uh, who will be sharing a bit more about what imagination is for them in, in the classroom. But uh, before we do that, maybe planting a seed for the speakers in our conversation afterwards. Um, what is a classroom for you? When we talk about the word classroom, what does it mean uh, for you? And then I think that second one, and it's triggered by, I think, what, Ron, you, you shared in your introduction. Based on what a classroom is for you, how do you light that first spark of imagination? If you think to that very, very first spark that then moves into this fire, this imaginative fire, uh, what does that mean um, for you? But before we'll uh, look into those questions, let's uh, pass over to the puppets to share their view on imagination in the classroom. And then there was a donkey who moved all the way across a different plane. And the donkey became a, quick, somebody, give me something. A fish. And the donkey became a fish. And the fish became a piece of cheese. And the cheese went to the moon. Okay, so the donkey became but the fish, became the cheese, went to the moon. Yeah, so one of the things that happens here is an imaginative practice. You get left, you know, doing this sort of storytelling. Feel free to keep going, guys. And, and as you're left, you think, oh, imagination is just a bunch of gobbledygook. It's just some mumbly thing that you do, and it's some playful thing that's distracting. Mm. What you're doing as you're working on a story, which Lionel will continue to tell, then what you're doing the moon, is you're giving yourself the chance to shoes. practice a muscle, to moon see beyond chickens. what you already see, Had shoes on. to feel beyond what you already feel. Shoes that they Play is not a joke. Moon Imagination moon is not silly. It's the most important moon tool you have as a species. Yeah. 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 Imagination in every classroom, it's the obvious thing. In every classroom. Jesus, we've got one, two, three, four. Imagination, 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 imagination in every room. Cheese, 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 chicken on the moon. And slow fade out. Just before I pass on to, to, to Francois to, to, to follow up on these questions, puppets as professors, um, puppets and teachers, they remove our cloaks, our identity that can be sources of strength and division, and they allow us to transcend into the world of imagination, into the essence of the idea and to imagine what's possible. Uh, there's a wonderful explanation that I always love reading on, on why AIM, why you use puppets as professors. Um, which you can definitely check out afterwards too. But uh, as Francois, maybe we'll go in the reverse order and you have to head off shortly. For you, what is a classroom and, and where does the imagination, where does it spark? Where have you seen it in your uh, life and work? Um, imagine if the classroom was the planet. Uh, I think that's, that would be my, my starting point uh, because I think we are all learning everywhere. Uh, we have all learning. Uh, uh, actually, the universe, uh, you know, uh, is is a, a place where we can learn. We can learn from other planets uh, because our imagination can instantly uh, drive us uh, at the other side of the galaxy, uh, and we can, you know, imagine a different planet uh, uh, thanks to our imagination. So I think that you know, imagination in the classroom is a way to. Uh, go out of the classroom's walls, uh, go out of the present, go out of the physical constraints. Uh, it's basically uh, creating a frame of freedom that we can explore and that we can evolve uh, to be much more fruitful uh, in our abilities to do things. I think that that's the, the most powerful uh, thing that, that can happen. And I think that indeed um, puppets or anything that uh, triggers or imagination uh, is is very good, and it's indeed you know we all have imaginary friends or or or, or stuff like this uh, when we're young enough. But um, I think we can we can um, go back 
to to that inner uh, um, imaginative uh, power. Uh, even Nietzsche was saying, you know, the the the, the wisest people are children again. Uh, I think that's that's really uh, we have to do is uh, imagine if we could learn from children as well. Uh, imagine if we can make uh, help them make their dreams come true. Uh, imagine that you know instead of us defining their rights, uh, we invite them to uh, define their own rights. Um, and it's going to be the hundredth anniversary of children's rights, and it's about time that we invite them to write their own rights. Um, and I think that you know we can uh, certainly. Um, trigger their imagination uh, by just um, inviting them to say, what do they want for their own children, for instance? That's that's a very easy, uh, you know, what planet do they want for their own children and for children of the world? Uh, that's, you know, again, you know, traveling in space and time is a very powerful ways of triggering imagination because suddenly you open all the possibilities. So it's not, I mean, sometimes for themselves, uh, they feel they already know the constraints of the world. But if you start asking them to to travel in space and time, you can uh, you can invite them to to be much more uh, imaginative than than the classical thing. And and I think that, you know, the classroom uh, is a place that can be constraining uh, and, and indeed might um hinder imagination too often but uh if done properly uh, uh it could be a place that triggers imagination uh even beyond because you can uh, and the beauty of a classroom is that you are with your peers uh and a benevolent adult uh and so you know each kid's imagination can enter in resonance with each other and and the teacher can foster this benevolent imaginative uh, creative space where they can climb on each shoulders shoulders uh, and imaginations so that you know they can imagine something that is bigger than anyone could have imagined alone uh, but that um means that that cannot happen without you know creating the setting okay so so you need an imaginative teacher um uh in order to have an imaginative classroom because you need the teacher to to go beyond what they know because the classical classrooms that they went through uh was not that imaginative okay so maybe you know you need the teachers to co-design uh the classrooms uh together with the kids uh saying you know what if we redesign the classroom so that we unleash our imagination i think you know these sorts of conversation uh where you imagine how to foster imagination uh, collectively is, I think, one of the interesting ways that uh, such conversation can be started in any classroom uh, all over the planet. Thank you so much uh, for, for having me. Sorry to have to, to rush, but the, the festival is going on and, and we are going to host uh, 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 one of our ministers uh, uh, shortly, so I'll have to, to leave you. It was a great pleasure um, to imagine the future together, and I'm sure that you know Ed will uh, let me know uh, all of the imaginative ideas that uh, you would have been sharing. Thank you so much. Well, I think it's great, Francois, for you to go into speaking with a minister having come out of an imaginative conversation because uh, everybody needs imagination, especially the ministers. So uh, I'll give that challenge to you and and maybe pass the baton next just to Nikita because you have, there are teachers around the, the world that you are supporting, that you are training. Um, and that challenge that Francois gave as well about, you know, a teacher uh having equal responsibility to set you know what they see an imaginative classroom to be and actually finding that spark um what what does that mean for you and and, and how do you kind of support the teachers in that journey i think i absolutely align with what francois just mentioned that we as adults who haven't gone through maybe that kind of an education as a kid to get imagination into your classroom because recently, Ed, I was just talking to one of my partner and uh, she mentioned that uh, what can we do for the children who just can't imagine a solution? And I said, have you gone back and asked them about it? And have they not been able to give you any answer? So I think at times we as adults, we go with our pre-assumptions about that oh, we think they can't. But I think it's more so of a mindset change for the adults to believe that everybody can imagine, right? So I think it's okay, maybe we were not um, lucky enough to get that kind of an exposure in our education system, but I think today's need is such that if we can create that kind of a thinking and imaginative um, uh, culture in the school where the child feels 
okay that I'm not going to be ridiculed for the idea that I'm going to come up with, I think that's going to help uh, the children of today. Because imagine we are talking with these um, children who are digital natives, right? They have the world at their fingertips with the mobiles that they are all using with the Google <laughs> to get the answers of, I'm sure Google was also somebody's imagination that I wish I get all the answers in one place. But then yes, I think as adults, if we can step back, if we can ask our children to take the lead and trust that yes, they can. And I'm sure they have been showing it time and again to us at Design for Change that yeah, it is possible and we adults don't need to give them any permission, but they themselves can do it. So yeah, hopefully we as adults um, give that, uh, what do we say? Uh, work on our own mindset and let the children imagine the world which will be surely a better place. Absolutely, Nikita, I agree. And I think there's a lot of things we learn that we have to break down to access our imagination. Um, and yeah, um, I might throw over to Nia. Um, and would you like to tell us about what is a classroom and how do you spark imagination? Um, yes, I, again, I think um, I, I kind of I'm more aligned to like the, the world and one another is like the classroom, but like, yeah, in school, our classroom is usually four walls and depending on how lucky we are, you know, they might be decorated nicely or have nothing in them or no windows. A lot of the classrooms I've worked in before have no windows, no natural light, you know, they're not they're not very inviting Um environments I guess um so I guess there's like my hope and vision that the world is our classroom and playground for learning but then the reality is a lot of us are working in little boxes um and yeah it can you know it can be hard um hard to work in there in those but like again I, I feel like a lot of the like in terms of like creating the space I think the physical space is is really important and when it's bright and light and you've got access to nature like that obviously has like huge benefits to how imaginative we can be. But I think more than anything are the, are the values and, and the sense of community is probably the most fundamental thing to kind of like awaken in imagination. Because I think if there's, um, like, like Nikita, you said about trust, and I think trust is so important and such an, you know, another one of those invisible forces that feeds imagination. If people don't feel like they're being trusted to imagine or that their ideas are going to be shot down or, um not you know they're not their their voice and their visions aren't respected I think you know there's there's a difference when you're feeding your imagination with love and you're feeding your imagination with fear you know and I've yeah when when you haven't done that relational work and that community building first in a space you know I've I've worked with young people and they're like well well why would I answer that question you know nothing's going to change nobody's going to listen what's the point you know and you've you've got to create that community first um and 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 back it up that like yeah you know people are listening um we do value your ideas and your visions and i think yeah growing like making space with all those invisible forces is so much harder than a lick of paint or bringing a plant in and they they all enhance imagination but I think it's that invisible stuff that really makes a big difference um and I, I think that's why I value the work of AIM so much is is the focus on values you know the the AIM values are so fundamental in how we kind of feed and free imagination and I think we can activate them in different ways but if we're all aligned on those values it's you know that's how we build a community where we can use our imagination to imagine something better, not just perpetuate or make worse what we already got. I, I think uh, yeah, everyone's nodding their heads and I think fully uh, agree. And, and you, you open up kind of notions about, you know, the way in which we set the place, both kind of the figurative and the figure, fig, physical space, it takes time. It takes a real commitment and energy and it's not, a simple thing that we just assume and it doesn't require tons and tons of resources but the sensitivity to open up and give that space to kind of the the invisible um and i am i as you mentioned hey man i am springing it on on you susie a bit before we pass to ron but you know you've you've set up with aim this imagination factory for disused cinemas 
uh, in Sydney, you're 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 creating this space and figuring out what the classroom looks like on a day to day. You're bringing puppets in as professors. Can you just maybe share a bit about yeah, what is that classroom for you guys at the factory, and uh, and and where is the imagination sparked? Because I can imagine the sparks are coming from absolutely everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. I, where to begin? I'm not even sure. I think a classroom for me, I think of just everything. I think you learn every single day. I think you use your imagination every single day. Um, in Aboriginal culture, a lot of nature is where a lot of learning happens and a connection happens. Um, but yeah, as for like a classroom and what that looks like and in school and things, it is often just like four walls in a classroom. And I think your environment, like it does make a difference when it's decorated nicely and they really incorporate like um, and encourage imagination. And at the Imagination Factory, um, it is just the most cool space ever. Um, not biased at all. It is, it's an, it's an old cinema. We have four cinema rooms. And I think just the energy space itself, it, there's been a, a, a lot of history there, a lot of good energy in that space. Um, and despite how not normal, not regular it is to walk into a cinema and um, be met with puppets, um, it just it's the most incredible space and we're able to use the space um to encourage the kids to think um about what their goals are and what they would like to achieve we run through activities um one called the game of life that we do with the kids each time and we show them a short video on our big cinema screen which is wild that we have a cinema screen um but we show them a video and then we go off into groups um we have a, this met like this method of unlikely connections times five and we work in these group of five um and we all sit in circles so that we're all like on an equal field there's no teacher there's no student we're peers we sit down and we really talk about um really anything with from the video that we've shown we can turn it into anything we can make the characters go and live in a like a, a dreamland with um fairy floss um lounges and you know the most anything they want to do and like we sit there and we just like talk about just the most fun things and I think it just gets the kids out of their comfort zone a little bit and there's a lot of space for personal growth um as well um and you know a lot of the kids that do come are maybe a little bit shy but this little session really gives them the chance to each have a turn at um using their imagination and it's just the space is so cool um and we just get to do so much there the puppets like it's <laughs> how cool like I've been learning how to um puppeteer and I never sort of have thought about that before I've never like I I was a big fan of Sesame Street when I was a kid but like I'd never even thought of the behind the scenes and just how much it really does um take off that cloak and when you're interacting with a, a kid or a young person like talking to a puppet really does you know take away uh, a bit of a barrier that might be hard for them to talk to an adult or someone and it just creates an imaginative space for them to be free be open and to say what they like and some of the reactions on the kids so far everything is just so fun and it's it's just a cool space like I, I hope everybody gets to come see <laughs> Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Susie. And and it's, it's there's so much kind of wisdom being shared across the board of of, of that that energy and that time to create that space that sparks imagination. And I, I think we have to go back to the root of this question, which is yourself, Ron. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong. You know, you curiosity learning came out of a dissatisfaction with what was happening or the space in the classroom and giving that extracurricular classroom to spark that curiosity. So maybe you can now answer the, the question that you helped to create. Um, what is the classroom for you? Where And where, where does imagination spark into flames uh, in that space? Yeah, you got that perfectly right. I was, I was uh, very dissatisfied, <laughs> very close to leaving, but my mom said no. Um, <laughs> no, but for me i think the question really is what what is a classroom like if you're going to treat a classroom as a place in a school then you're already putting a limit on it but if you're going to say a classroom is a place where learning happens i think that opens up so many more so many more doors for what, what can a classroom look like um but i will say i really i really resonate with what nia said about there is the physical aspect of it but there's also the non-physical aspect of it of like creating a safe space like how does the space feel and i think honestly that non-physical aspect is a lot more important than the physical. 
Like no matter, you can go outside, you can treat the planet as a classroom, but if you don't feel safe with the people you're around, you're not going to be able to imagine anything. You're just going to be thinking about what the people are thinking about each other. You're not going to feel comfortable You're going to, to imagine new things together. So I, I think that is such an important point to see how can we create the safe space. And the way I personally do it is, is by the first thing I do is teamwork. Like firstly, just games, feeling comfortable with one another, feeling, having fun with one another. I think to be comfortable and feel safe, you need to laugh with each other. Like the people are serious a lot, but, but I think if we're going to go to imagination and think about when we're kids as well, it's just about laughs and about enjoying your time together with one another. I think that really helps contribute to a safe space and environment. I can say personally, I, if we do look at it, I do think the physical space has something to do with it. Um, not nothing. Personally, anytime I do a session, I don't like leaving chairs and, and tables. I always ask everyone to move it all to the side. And then we have this big area we can walk around and we can make circles because I think that firstly, it changes it. it they're like, oh, okay, we're doing something different. Now is the time where we can, we can think. Now is the time we can, we're not just sitting down and doing as we're told, but we have this opportunity. And I think that shift in, in environment, also physical environment, does contribute to the, to the imagination aspect of things. Um, but then it's taking that spark and then nurturing it through the safe and the connection is with one another. And I say personally, th there's a full thing that we do is a section called Get Curious, where we just bring in a little, a little thing of like either a short science experiment or like a, a guest speaker or even just a five minute video and then ask, hey, what questions do you have about this? What questions do you have about this video? Just to get the gears going, just to really start thoughts. And I think that's the biggest thing. How can you get people to start imagining, okay, this is what could be coming. This is what I want to learn about. Because to me, that's the most important role as a teacher, like getting the kids wanting to learn about your subject. Not even, because once kids want to learn, they will find a way to learn. Once kids want to learn, they will find a way to learn. But just getting them wanting to learn, that's the challenge. That's the tricky bit. And I think that's where the focus should be at. Thanks so much, um, Ron. And and uh, I also really appreciate Erman um, in the background, who's, who's given consistent threads from each of you, Nikita, Nia, Ron, Susie, Francois as well, taking the time to create space for togetherness, for relation, for play, for laughter. But it's really come up, and you mentioned this particularly, Ron, for, for feeling safe. And, and and having and feeling like you can trust uh, people enough to then have that vulnerability to be imaginative and to access your imagination uh, and to access or, or to like that that spark. Um, and, and I think that does lead us into maybe a closing round from 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 each of you from the speakers because I mean we could go on for for hours but, just the the question of we're continuing on this spark. What is what is a spark that you want to carry with you from this session, from this conversation, into your year? And I'm gonna I'm gonna be not say necessarily your work, but just into into your world as you move into the rest of 2023. Uh, and uh, would love to possibly pass to uh, to Nia. Maybe you'd like to go first. What's a spark that you want to carry with you today? Oh gosh, I. It's such a big question. I can't narrow it down. Um, a spark. Can you come back? I actually can't think. There's so I many. There's like a firework display going off in my head and I'm trying to narrow I, it down to one. <laughs> I'll give you time to kind of light the wood. So your, your okay. wood is uh, lighting. Maybe uh, maybe yeah. Nikita, is your wood already? Is it already lit? Uh, are you ready to carry it? <laughs> I think mine was lit by what uh, Francois just mentioned about planetism and uh, how each one of us is from this planet and if we can love towards this and I think the moment you say the word love naturally the ca care kindness trust belief all of these words will come up and of course creating the safe space right so I think that is going to be my spark today to take it from. Amazing. How about yourself, Ron? For me, the You're spark like... is to, um, I think that connection to really bring it in more, uh, how do you, what's the word? Consciously. 
to bring imagination into the daily life more consciously. You say my, my sister does sometimes horse like fake horse riding like with a stick and before I was like okay come on you're already like 11 like yeah but really saying yeah that's okay like yeah continue doing that I think that's something I'll bring into to try to bring into environments I'm in and try to bring into myself as well amazing and Susie you've just uh written a wonderful response in the chat maybe you can share that with us before we uh, pass on to Nia to light her fire yeah, absolutely. I was just thinking, reflecting on imagination and bringing it into the classroom and stuff that um, there's so many societal norms and constructs that have, we've learnt to be a certain way as we've grown into adulthood and then into your careers and, you know, a lot of spaces that you're in, you don't get to tap into that childlike imagination. So I think for me, I'd love to like focus on trying to break down those societal expectations of what I should be doing and just go back to being like a kid and just have that raw and fun imagination and listen to the kids and spend time with the kids in my family and just really listen to what they got to say so yeah amazing yeah are you ready I think so I'm gonna I'm gonna build off of what, what everyone said and I can't narrow it down to one but two play and love for me and I think that's what AIM do so well I feel like like when you're talking about the imagination factory Susie like a lot of those things like trust like it takes time to build but AIM just do it so fast like like you said like you can as soon as you're in the doors it just feels different and I think it's because it's so playful and you can just feel the love in the room you know and we don't talk about love in education enough love in life enough for let alone in education so yeah how can we use love and play as sparks that's a wonderful way to to close and to to light this spark going into the to to, to the rest and the future of our conversations and uh there's going to be lots of them as well so with with learning planet and aim we're looking long term at uh at really pushing through the imagination circle these threads and gathering all of the riches from these conversations into this wider knowledge base of how how we can find free and feed imagination as near you so wonderfully described before and so uh, we'll be building that over the course of this year and uh, excited to have everyone join on the journey but uh, in the meantime thanks so much to yourself near to ron to nikita as well uh, to susie uh, to francois uh, there's been so much already shared today and can't wait to see what's going to come up uh, in the coming weeks and months ahead. So thanks everyone for watching, for the speakers as well, and uh, wishing to you to carry this imaginative flame into 2023. Thanks everyone. Thank you so much.